Greetings once again. Here we are this evening. It's a beautiful day in California. We uh, enjoy every minute of what's going on. And of course, the perception of what's going on is uh, has to do with how you hear. Are you dull of hearing because you've heard so much for so many years and nothing has come to pass? Nothing has manifested where we've all told each other the promises are coming. The promises are coming. Well, let me help you tonight. We've had earthquakes. We've had rumors of wars and fires and everything. And I believe the Father's trying to wake us up. Awake, awake, old slumber. And he's trying to tell us, you know what? Don't be afraid of earthquakes. Don't be afraid of the storms. Don't be afraid of the rumors of war. If you're in him, you're hidden in him. Nothing will affect you. And so uh, once again, we're going to go to Isaiah and read... Uh, <coughs> excuse me, Isaiah chapter 6, verse 9 and 10, and see what it has to say for us. And then we're going to go from there and catch a few other things that we need to lay hold of. And some of you that have been with us long enough and uh, for a season now, you know that iniquity is twisted teachings. Uh, Yahshua is the son's name. Yahuwah is the father's name. So we're going to go ahead and start with Isaiah. He had a vision. He was in the temple and he cried out, Woe, woe is me. Then the angels, the two uh, seraphim angels were on the altar, the ark, the gold, the mercy seat, beyond the veil. They cried out one to another. <laughs> Excuse me. Holy, holy, or kadosh, 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 kadosh. Okay, so let's start. In the year that King Uzziah died, I saw also the Lord sitting upon a throne high and lifted up, and his train filled the temple. Now every time the king in you dies, the Father reveals himself to you as king. Have you made him king, or are you still struggling with your own noble ways? You know, a king in his own eyes, a god into himself, and uh, that's where we're at in America today. Uh, just the world soccer champs, the United States of America, after they won and then they were free to do their thing, the barachi, <laughs> the lawlessness, the innuendos, the lesbianism, the, oh my goodness, the feminism. I mean... You could hear them, they're going, we're coming after you, you damn bitches. They said that on nationwide TV and hear their road models to our children as, we, as they watch the United States win the World Cup or the Gold Cup or the Cup in France, whatever term. But they were poor examples of a wholesome United States of America. That's why I support Trump in his saying Let's make America beautiful. Let's restore America once again. Why? Because we've done lost. We're not, we're not number one. I, I don't know what scale we're at, but we're not number one. I mean, we just got the governor of California signing a bill of, oh my goodness, of all the stuff that you and I don't, don't agree on. And so we need to rise up, pray, and say California belongs to Yahuwah, belongs to Yeshua, belongs to Messiah. Why? Because the earth and the fullness thereof belongs to our Father. And He gave it to His Son, and His Son gave it to them that have ears to hear and are connecting to the, yes, to the global Son. Why, do my, why am I using the term global? Because there's a whole movement right now. It's called a movement. They're trying to get one global order. We're trying to restore one, <laughs> yeah, one spiritual man back to global dominance, to dominion over the whole earth. Because the earth and the fullness thereof belongs to our Father. Now keep reading with me. And he said, The Lord sitting upon a throne, high and lifted up, and his train filled the temple. Above it stood the seraphims. Each one had six wings with twine. He covered his face, he, and twine he covered his feet. And with twine he did fly. And one cried to another and said, Holy, holy, holy is Yahuwah of hosts. 
the whole earth is full of his glory. And the post of the door moved at the voice of him that cried. When you hear the voice of the Father, whatever you have, yes, that has been hindering you will move. Here it says, and the post of the door moved at the voice of him that cried. When you hear the voice of the Father, this is why so many people are in chaos, because they're not listening, they're not connecting to a true Shiliac, an apostle. When you connect to an apostolic mindset, you've got to renew your mind. When's the last time that you spoke to somebody other than family, other than someone you know? and just spoke about the things of Yah, the things of the Messiah. Some of us don't even know how to befriend people. So then what do we do? We go back into the soulish attitude and talk to our mom, talk to our dad, talk to our brother, talk to our sister, talk to our aunts, our uncles, our family. And then as we go down the line, we begin to talk to church people. And most of the church people don't know anything concerning the kingdom. And this is why Isaiah said, Woe is me, I'm a man of unclean lips because I have nothing to say. What was his problem? His mindset. His mindset. Now watch as we continue to read. Verse 4, And the post of the door moved at the voice of him that cried, and the house was filled with smoke. When you listen to the voice, it will move every structural Hallelujah. It will move every hindrance. It will move every setback. It will remove every fault. It will remove every injury. It will remove every doubt. It will remove everything of negativism, every poverty attitude you've had, every failure. Some of us men, we suffer from lack of self-esteem. We suffer from rejection. I remember leaving my home at early in age and I lived in dipsy dumpsters on the street of San Francisco. I lived with in between the buildings. Why? Because I was strung out on drugs. I chose that. My parents didn't say, well, now you grow up to do this. They tried everything, but they couldn't harness me. So they said, you got to leave. You can't bring this kind of stuff in our home. And I, I was glad to leave. I wanted to be free, but I wasn't free. I was even deeper in bondage because the enemy began, I was not wise, I did not know his devices, and he began to snare me to the point that when I came to the foot of the cross and met Yeshua HaMashiach, I literally had to take an overdose of drugs, and that's what brought me to the saving knowledge of what the scripture talks about, redemption, reconciliation, all these things. So if you think that we're not going to uh, go through process, you have another thing coming. And some of you may read the scripture, some of you may pray, but when's the last time that you shared the truth about the kingdom, the truth about his name that you've learned? Because many of us, we are beginning to see the promotion of our heavenly father's name, Yahuwah. And Yahuwah has to be mentioned. His name shall go out throughout the whole earth. His, now listen to, in the book of Chronicle, it says that his eyes go to and fro upon the whole earth to show himself strong on behalf of them that call on his name. Have you called on his name? You probably have, like I did. Oh God, help me! And there he did, he showed up. But now as I began to grow and I began to follow the scripture and I began to apply the scripture and I began to try to really live the scripture, he began to change me from the inside. Not from the outside, he changed the inside. Now let's read on. And then he says in verse 5, Then I, woe is me, for I am undone, because I am a man of unclean lips, and I dwell in the midst of the people of unclean lips. For my eyes have seen the king, the Lord of hosts. Now if you were reading it in Hebrew, it would be the Elohim of host. Why? Because that's the plural form. And then, of course, of course, the host is speaking about you and I. He's identifying with us. And why is that? Because he made you and I in his image and likeness. He's wanting to purchase you and I back because the blood of his son 
was poured out at Calvary for you and I. Let's read on. Uh, hallelujah. And then he says, Then flew one of the seraphims unto me. See? The heavenly host begins to favor you, begins to uh, bring financial streams of income, begins to bring peace to you, begins to bring shalom, begins, he begins to do what he's called to do. He's affirming who you are. So he begins by saying to you and him, but then flew one of the seraphims, one of the seraphims, I could never understand, well, why one? Why didn't two? Because you're the other one. When one is saying holy, you're responding back because you're made in the image and likeness of your father. It's in you to say holy. It's in you to respond back to the seraphim angel that says to you. <laughs> Watch what he said. Then flew one of the seraphims unto me, having a live coal in his hand, which he had taken from the, with tongs from off the altar. The angel took a, a red umber or ember or coal or log from the outer court and brought it through, yes, the dalit, the door, into, past the menorah, past the showbread table, to the altar. My goodness, to the altar and placed that coal on the lips of Isaiah. Remember, Isaiah just finished to having an encounter. The angel flew, the voice of the Father spoke. <laughs> the, the things that were hindering him, that he was so under, under damnation, condemnation. It was done. It was over. It was removed. There was no recollection of his past. There was no recollection of his sin. All there was is that he knew that he knew he belonged to Yahuwah. And he was given an, a mission, an assignment to go to the planet, yeah, the new Jerusalem and claim it back for the Father. So here we are, House to House Discipleship Institute, and I'm claiming California back for the Father. I'm claiming that your soul and my soul will come to a place of honor again. That where you lack, where you failed, the Father will once again raise you up. He comes under to push us upward. Why? Because he wants every son and daughter to ascend. Now let's read on. Watch this. Hallelujah. And I heard the voice of the Lord, Elohim, saying, Whom shall I send and who will go for us? For us. Was he, was he talking about the, the angelic host in heaven or was he talking to the Ruach and talking to the sun? You have to make that distinction. If you're a son and you know you're a son, then you know within your understanding he was speaking, the father was speaking to the son and the Ruach because they're all three are Echad, they're one. So he says to them, uh, then said I, here am I, send me. In the opening verses, Isaiah is crying out, Woe is me, I'm a man of unclean lips. Seven verses later, he says, Send me. Okay, and that was prophetic because there's going to be a people like you and I today that don't have to cry out, Send me, but we know we're sent. We know we've been given an assignment. We know we've been empowered. We know we've been ascended. We know we've been clothed with righteousness. We know that our parents have looked after us. We know that the Father loves us unconditionally. We know that the Son has redeemed us. We know that the Ruach Kadosh has given us power to overcome and have a victorious life. But one thing is missing. You must. Now let's read so you can see it. Hallelujah. Verse 9, and he said, Go and tell this people, Hear ye indeed, but understand not. Go and tell this people, Hear ye indeed, but understand not. And see ye indeed, but perceive not. Here's a people that Isaiah is speaking to. They don't hear and they don't understand. Why? Next verse. Make the heart of this people fat. Make their ears heavy. Shut their eyes, lest they see with their eyes, 
and hear with their ears and understand with their heart and convert and be healed. Then said I, Yahuwah, how long? And he answered, until the cities be wasted without inhabitants and the houses without man and the land be utterly desolate. And Yahuwah had removed men far away and there be a great forsaking in the midst of the land. But ye in it shall be a tenth. Look at this. You're a tithe to your father. A tenth. He wipes out the whole city to save the remnant. And he says to you and I, but yet it, it shall be a tenth and it shall return and it shall be eaten as a tail tree and as an oak whose substance is in them. When they cast their leaves, so the holy seed shall be the substance thereof. Who's the holy seed? I hope you know you are. And until we see each other again, I'll explain more of how holy of a seed you are. Don't let circumstances get you down. You got to really release your emuna. Trust your father. Do you know that today uh, my wife and I were out and she she hit the edge of the of of those uh, you know where they cut out the 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 sidewalk. They cut it out and they put those yellow things so that the wheelchairs go over and you know that. Okay, she hit that little bump and boom, she fell. And as I'm holding her, I pulled her so she would roll. And so she rolled, but she skinned her knee. And I'm like, what else, Father? I mean, she's let alone she's amputee. Then add to that, she's blind. Then add to that, you know, that she can't really walk as you and I do with sight and toes to balance our footing. And I said, what else? And I heard a voice say, she can endure more than you could. And I said, well, thank you, Father, that she could. Now let her go and be strengthened in the inner man. She goes, I'm fine. Help me up. So I helped her up. We sat on a bench. And then as soon as uh, she recouped herself, she goes, come on, let's go. So we got up and went to take care of what we needed to take care of. She's a holy seed. She's a remnant. She's part of the body of Yahuwah. So until you and I get that in our hearts, and in our mind and in our feet, we got to continue to challenge ourselves. Don't let your soul dictate. Let your spirit begin to lead and guide because he abides inside. Shalom.